Hey everybody, welcome back to Going Ballistic, your research and destruction channel, and today we are doing both of those today. We have body armor, not just one or two brands, we have eight brands here that we're gonna be testing to help you figure out what type of body armor you're gonna to wanna to buy. Buying body armor is a big purchase for most of us, and you can't return it, so get it right the first time and hopefully we can help you. What do you look for in a good body armor? Lightweight, heavy, more coverage, and do you care what country it comes from? So a lot of people consider level four to be the best but most expensive body armor on the market. And all that means is the standard testing is with the Grand 30-06 armor piercing round from World War II. There's a lot of different ammo out there, but they're still only testing to a World War II armor piercing standard. So most level three is also rated to stop an M80 308 round. So the most common platform in America is the AR platform. And the two most common rounds that are out there by the thousands are the 55 grain M193 full jacket and also the 62 grain green tip M855 round. Those are out there by the thousands. So that's mostly what you're gonna be facing if you're unfortunately having to wear body armor every day. Okay, we got all kinds of different plates for you guys today. We got some that are just PE, we got some that are ceramic in PE, some that are steel in PE, and some, some that are just steel. And some of the plates will also be ICW. And what that is, is if you don't have this in conjunction with this plate, then it's not gonna stop the round that it's rated for. The way we are testing all this body armor is exactly the same. They'll all be strapped to the same gel torso, same distance of shooting, same shot pattern as all of these, and there'll be 11 shots. Odd numbers are the 193, even numbers are the 855s. All right, first one we got up here is Defentex. This is a LPBA, which stands for Low Profile Body Armor. It's from Australia. We met these guys at SHOT Show, and we asked them if we could test their body armor uh, which is right now only for military and law enforcement, but they sent it out for us. Now, this is one of four of the ICWs that we're going to be shooting today. And this one, as you guys can see, is multi-curve. So let's get going. I know Chris mentioned in the intro that the AR is the most common platform shooting the, the 5.56 rounds, but we're going to use a bolt gun for this for max velocity and consistency You know, with a 20-inch barrel. This is a Mossberg MVP, and the ammo we're using is the M193 55 grain lead core and the M855 62 grain with the steel penetrator. This is new Lake City Winchester ammunition. It's not old school surplus that's been sitting in a warehouse forever. So we should get some really consistent results and we do have a chronograph set up as well. All right, so first round up is the M193. All the odd number X's are gonna be M193. The even numbers are gonna be the M855, just to clarify. Crikey, mate. I think it held up pretty well. Jeez. It blokes down on to know what they're doing. That's all I got, man. That's all I got. That is offensive. <laughs> hey, man, I love the Australians. Right? They be cool people. They make good body armor. Let's check this out. There we go. So this is a multi-curve. Again, I... ICW means you have to have this plate behind it in order to get the rating that this one has. Check this out. Now you can hold your eggs on this thing. Looks like an egg crate. We did have one right here, came through and went actually into the second plate, but peel it away. Ooh, he took a punishment, but no penetration, none at all. The strap was cutting into the gel here, but that's just because it was jiggling like my big belly. But check this out. Actually took one on the very edge, which is supposed to be the worst spot to get hit. But this thing still held up. It caught the round and did not go through. Thanks to Defentex for sending this stuff out from all the way over the pond. We really appreciate it. This is some good quality stuff here. Plate number one done. On to number two. 
Okay, just to answer some other questions that are probably floating around in your head, on the eight planes, we are ranking them by cost, weight, thickness, and performance. And to be fair, as far as the weight ranking goes, think of it as a one by one uh, plate. And what that is for you guys nerds out there, that goes by aerial density, because all these are different shapes and sizes, but just, just imagine that these are one by one plates. The Aussies are up on the leaderboard right now. Of course, it's the only one we shot. Now we got the Agilite standalone. This is a single curve. Not sure what it's made out of, but we're gonna find out. So this is the second thinnest we got. Um, the website says that it'll protect against 193 and 885, but the back of this actually says threat level 762 by 39 API BZ, which is really hard to get uh, AK round. So not sure why the uh, website and this is different, but we're gonna find out. Here we go. All right, second plate, the Agilite Invader. Shot number one. I don't think this one held up as good as the first one. This is the Agilite Invader. Let's see how it did. And by the way, hey everybody, it's ceramic. It definitely is. <laughs> right here and here. This one was an edge shot here, if you wanna come take a closer look at this. So here's the back, not as much uh, bulging as the first one, but the first one also is an ICW, this is standalone. This first one here, hit down here, now this, this split here is from the strap. However, there is a penetration in here where some of the ceramic blew off the side because we want to try to test each plate fairly, like we said, and get a sh uh, edge shot. You can see fragments actually in shot number three, it uh, deflected off and, at, and entered the uh, gel. All right, I'm kind of eager for the U.S. to get back in the game here. We're, uh, we're not doing so good. First, we're going to hear from Italy. So this is the Safe Light Fraz, the flexible rifle armor system. And uh, this is why we're using the AD. This one is the most expensive and biggest armor that we're going to shoot here today. But it's actually second lightest by area. So this does come as a complete vest, but it is the most expensive one that we're going to be testing today. So this one is actually kind of like that, um, kind of like the dragon skin or dragon scale uh, body armor. There it is. There it is. Now I can see it. This one's up next. Let's see how it holds up. All right, shot number one on the Safe Life Fraz. This one I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to do because it uh, seems like there's a little bit of a gap in between the tiles. This one here, I tell you, this one caused some pain on, on the guy. Definitely ripped. Also, uh, really coming apart. This is the kind of body armor, it gets thicker when you shoot it. So, not bad, but still, in my opinion, not as good as the first armor, the Aussie armor. Because this thing here did, this, this is definitely going to cause uh, a rip in the skin. Or was that the other one? Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's the one that definitely got embedded. Okay, that was the first shot, or the first one that went through on the second armor, the American armor. This one did, when we were looking at it, it was pushed in pretty far. So still probably going to definitely cause some massive bruising. But um, all in all, the ceramic held up with 11 shots. Now we did offset the target just a hair, all the markings, so we could get, again, trying to be as fair as we can on all this armor. So another basically edge shot and stuff. What do you think, Justin? Not too bad, considering I kind of thought it would squeeze through the tiles a little bit, but yeah, it's holding up. Still good. No penetration, no penetration. Hey, we got a good jingle for him. Safe flight is great, safe life will save. I hate that commercial, man. Nerd. <laughs> All right, next armor. All right, the Italian job was a success there. We actually thought it wasn't gonna do that good, but it did pretty good. So now we got another one, safe life but this is going 
to China. So I, I pretty much hate this. Designed in Las Vegas, but assembled in China. All right, so we got the Safe Life Level 4. Um, this one is an ICW, so you have to have the backer here. Now we just, they say you can use any comparable one, so we went with a well-known brand. RTS is good. So we're gonna be using this as the backer piece to give it the level four uh, rating. Um, this is a single curve plate, as you guys can see, and the AD on this one would be the second heaviest plate that we're gonna do. So let's see how Safe Life China holds up. All right, shot number one on the Safe Life level four, China edition. Okay, let's see how our China armor held up here. Um, there's a bunch of daggum big holes in it, that's for sure. And we did actually get a penetration because China is more like Burger King and not Wendy's, they cut corners. Um, we did an edge shot here and this is nothing but a bunch of thick foam. So, I mean, it, it'll hold up great if you drop it, but um, it's taken away some of the protection from you. And even though it had the uh, ICW 3A backer here, I mean, that's not gonna stop a 223 round, so, or 5.56. Five, now, if you look here, it did actually have some, some tears in it. Okay, that was the penetration. These tears here would definitely cause some tissue damage. But, I mean, all in all, every round held up. Again, this is, this has different square tiles in it all stacked like this not mosaic but square so if it gets hit it doesn't shatter all the way across still held up pretty good i just don't like this stuff because they put the big old cheesy foam on the side here all right that's armor number four down here comes number five okay enough about china armor we're gonna move back to the usa here this one um it's not my favorite it's a little kind of embarrassing this is still a 10 by 12 uh, single curve, but you can see they totally Burger King this thing, man. They cut the ends off here, uh, so it doesn't give you a whole bunch. So that's why we're doing, um, basically we're calling these square uh, blocks here, foot by foot for aerial density. So this one is AR500 brand. Not sure if it's really AR500 steel, but this is the Armored Republic is what this stands for. Um, again, this is an A2 plate, single curve, level three standalone. It's the cheapest, thinnest, and heaviest plate we got here, and we're gonna destroy it. Let's do it. All right, Armored Republic, A2 plate, shot number one. All right, let's see how our Burger King body armor held up here. Again, I'm calling it that because they cut corners, literally. Okay, so we did have to redo a couple shots because, well, this is our second day shooting this same video, so um, we did have some wind and stuff change on us, but right here on one shot, we had it just barely hit the plate and it went in and then also shot number three the first time. So these don't, don't count. The yeah, don't worry about it. You'll be fine, it's just a flesh wound. But um, I mean, all in all, if the plate was hit on the plate, it stopped it. America's back in the game with um, stopping rounds. Very, very little dimpling in the back here. We'll have to see, comment below, what do you guys think uh, about this? Again, it's the cheapest, but the heaviest and it's not really one foot by one foot. So, all right, on to the next one. Okay, so this is the next plate we're doing. This is still with the AR500. It's still an A3 plate, single curve. But just to show you, now this one has a lighter AD. So what that means is they can give you more material versus this one, which is still much heavier. But it's also not quite, but about three times the cost. But you can see the different swimmer cuts in these two. Again, this one gives you a little bit more protection here. 
versus this one here, lighter. And um, that's what we got, so we're gonna send it. Armored Republic A3, shot one. This is some weird body armor. I mean, we got like rhino lining type stuff on the front. I don't know what this falling liner is, but it looks like rhino lining. So this is an interesting plate. Check it out. It's got polyethylene on the, or well, okay, that's not polyethylene. That's just some weird Walmart plastic. And then we got Kevlar. Then we got polyethylene. Then we have Kevlar wrapped on the front and then a thin metal plate. Very interesting. Now I know why it's three times the cost. There is, there's a lot of engineering went into this plate. This is pretty interesting. It is, it is pretty light and pretty much stopped everything. No penetration. No penetration. Again, this one was way on the edge shot because we're trying again to be fair and do edge shots on everything. Still, I think the only one that stopped an edge shot was the Australian armor. But, you know, I would say this, this armor here put America back in second. So, not bad, Armored Republic. So, all right, that's it. We are on to the next one. Okay, we're on to the HESCO. This is the second to the last plate we're testing, and it's the second most expensive. This is a HESCO 3810 LV, US made. Now, on HESCO's website, it says three plus in conjunction with, which means the three A backer. But on the back of this plate, it doesn't mention anything about that. So a little confusing. So in order to get that rating on this, I would just definitely back it up with this. So this seems very uh, top tier plate here. It's very nice. Uh, it's light, it's thin. And I'm learning a lot on this and I hope you guys are too with this multi-curve. I was like, man, it's like just really uncomfortable, but when you start looking at the body armor from the side here, and it's not, it actually sticks out from your body um, where this one tucks it in real nice. So really starting to like these plates here. But anyways, this is what we got for you. Let's get rolling. HESCO 3810 LV, shot one. Man, I gotta tell you, this is a this is a good looking plate. You talk about something that looked like it was just like taking it, no problem. Taking it like a champ. Here we go. We did do a really good side shot here. It did come out of the side. Uh, again, trying to be fair for everybody because we did that on the first one. We thought, okay, everyone's gonna have a side shot. Um, we might. It just kind of blew out the side. It did not go through, but it did cause it to ricochet out this way. So a lot of egg bumps on the back there, but no penetrations through the first uh, body armor level. So definitely this ICW backer is nice. So they're right on par. I think we got a tie for first here, man. We got one more plate. Let's see what it does. All right, last plate. Now, when I first saw this plate, I was like, and he, he, he went to hand it to him. You can see it's the thickest plate we got, multi-curve. I was ready to just like, whoa, that's a heavy plate. This is the lightest plate we got. This is, we don't even know what the material is on this. Now this one is a Spartan Elafros. It is a level three, no plus. Now they don't claim that it'll stop an 855 or 193, but we're gonna try it. That's an awful lot of plate to uh, not stop, but what? pistol rounds I'm not sure so anyways we are going to definitely punish this one find out what's inside again standalone Spartan Elafros good yeah. uh, this is the one I've been waiting for the Spartan Elafros round one this thing is super light I thought it was like styrofoam I thought it was supposed to be a trainer plate but we'll see what we can do
Okay, looking at this thing head on, it looks perfect, man. Up from the top here, well, there is styrofoam, there is styrofoam in this thing. <laughs> but and any penetration? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. We got one, two, three, four, five rounds <laughs> through this thing. Again, it's level three, not level three plus. Honestly, why would you want this armor? I wouldn't buy this armor. It, it's coming apart. I mean, it's all, it's all polyethylene and styrofoam. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, this is definitely, this was the last body armor and definitely the worst. Even though it's got the cool Spartan helmet on it, that's all, it's, it's a good shelf display piece. All right, so you guys gotta let us know in the comments what you guys thought of this whole test. So we did four ICWs and four standalones. Now, as far as a plate system would go for me, my choices would definitely be the Defentex and also the HESCO. Those did really, really well. Um, for a standalone, maybe, I would go with the Agilite, but, but it's heavier, so. There's so many different factors. Yeah, there's play so here. many different factors. A single curve, multi-curve. This one here, the last one we did, this is training armor, okay? <laughs> In our opinion. Where's the trash can? Yeah. <laughs> that one was a standalone plate. Again, it wasn't rated for the um, 855 or the 193 they claimed. And, you know, those got the core in it. I don't know. What was your what was your choice? What would you like? Yeah, it, right on par. The Fentex and the Hesco one are pretty impressive. I just don't know. Well, they are ICWs. Yeah. But I guess, I guess we can refer to the, the data chart at the end to kind of break down everything and make it easier to choose. Yeah, well you guys let us know which one you like. Hopefully this video helped you guys in your uh, purchase of body armor. Um, and remember, it, it, it all depends on what you're looking for in the body armor, uh, what you're gonna get. Uh, we, we got from expensive to pretty cheap stuff here. I do like this one here, but it, it comes as a complete vest, you have to buy it. So you're gonna get some cool uh, side plates already built into it. Um, again, that comes down to cost though. These are not cheap, but they are still a good body arm. This would be, I'd say tied for first, second, standalone, this one by itself. That was a good one. Well, this one you can have repeated hits. Yeah. You got a spalling factor and limited coverage as well. Yeah, definitely on that. Well, cool. Let us know what your thoughts are. Hopefully we helped you in this video pick out your body armor because they're expensive and remember you can't return it. So thank you guys for watching and putting up with us on this video. This was an awesome video. We want to thank our friends in Moab, Utah for inviting us out to, in this beautiful countryside to do this uh, test on this armor. Hope you guys liked it. We'll be back.